Hi there, I'm Jim. And I'm Claire. Let's talk teaching. Welcome to Let's Talk Teaching, a podcast from the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology here at Illinois State University. I'm Jim G. Joining me today, once again, our director, Dr. Claire LaMonica. Hey, Claire. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm good. It's It's 2019. Who would have guessed? And for once, we're not recording this podcast early enough or I'm not late enough editing it to where we're actually recording it in 2019. (laughs) And it should And it should premiere a couple days at most after I record it because we're talking about something topical. We're at the beginning of the fall, or I'm sorry, the spring semester, and we're going to revisit our old friend, the midterm chat. Yay. So let's start out. Some folks may not be familiar or may need a refresher about a midterm chat because, and we'll link to the old episode we did that goes into more depth about what it's about. But that was back in 2016, I think we recorded that. It was a while ago. It was one of our, it was one of our inaugural episodes. So um, what is a midterm chat? What are the virtues of a midterm chat? How do they, how does a midterm chat differ from other forms of assessments of teaching? Um, A midterm chat is basically a way of collecting some information from your students about their experience with your course before you get to the end of course evaluation period. So we're talking about midterm, fifth to eighth or ninth week, sometime in there. Basically what happens is that a chat facilitator from CTLT comes to your class, meets with your class, you're gone. We ask them four questions. We ask, what is there about this class that uh, helps you learn? Is there anything about this class that makes it difficult for you to learn? Do you have any suggestions for ways that your instructor could make this a better learning experience? And do you have any suggestions for ways that you as students could make this a better learning experience? So they answer those four questions, and then we come back Well, I should have said there's a process of consensus building. The the students go through a process of consensus building. So when we bring the data back to our offices, what we're looking at is not individual student responses, but a consensus of the class. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the main thing that uh, delineates a midterm chat from other kinds of evaluations, even the kind of self-administered uh, midterm evaluations that mm-hmm. I know we know a lot of instructors do where and a lot of people actually ask those same questions of their students um, at the midterm rather than having us come in probably because it's a bit of a time suck you have to give us a you have to give us a day a, yeah, a, a, a class, class session period. basically unless it's a long you know it usually yeah. takes 40 to 50 minutes so right. depending on the size of the class the difference between asking those questions yourself in a survey or or whatever and having us come is the consensus piece. So mm-hmm. when you're doing a survey, you're still going to get that sort of disaggregated data. Yeah. And uh, it's it's not going to tell you as closely sort of what are the things that the class as a whole agree on. Because when we come in and we do that consensus uh, the consensus part of it, it, we're fostering a discussion among the students right. to an extent. Um, and so, and we only uh, have the answers in the kind of the final report that students have gotten pretty close to consensus on. Yeah. Um, it may not be 100% consensus all the time, I think, but it's yeah, uh, but pretty, we, close. pretty close. Pretty close. To close. It. We, we usually, I, I think most of us, you know, we usually tell students, hey, you know, if there's something we just can't agree on, that's okay. It's not yeah. a big deal. You guys yeah. can. Talk about that on your end of semester evaluations. We really right. want to concentrate on the things that you can, where you can come to a consensus. Sure. And then the other thing uh, along those lines, we ask the instructor to go back to the, and talk to their students about some of those uh, consensus points. Right. That's kind of a, that's actually kind of an important point is that uh, there's a, after the midterm chat, we, we, we meet with the instructor and give them, um, our, give them our feedback, the feedback from the class. And then we do ask them to go back and talk to the class and talk about the feedback that they got. And we usually say, hey, pick something. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a big thing. Pick one of the things they mentioned. Say that you're going to tweak that. And, yeah. you know, and then pick one of the things that they mentioned that they could do as students and, um ask them to tweak that as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. becomes sort of a mutual a mutual uh, tweaking process. 
a mutual tweaking pro- I well, don't it beats, know. I it lost beats, the word. I well, just it, lost language. <laughs> it, it, it beats the, I think the official name uh, uh, in, in the research for this is a small group instructional diagnosis. diagnosis. Yeah. A small group instructional diagnosis, which to me always makes it sound like there's something wrong or somebody's sick or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there's been so, like a plague, and we're yeah. going to try to make sure, try, try to figure out what it is. So mutual tweaking certainly is an improvement <laughs> to that. Yeah. So we've been doing these for a long time, and we and in our previous episode on midterm chats, we kind of talked about the history and how they came about here on campus at, at Illinois State. We've always kind of taken it to an extent on faith that they were... That they were valuable. We everyone seemed to be happy. The students seemed to be happy. You know, you you and I both have talked about students would come up to us after doing one of these chats and they say, "Could you go do this for Professor So and So?" And we're like, "No, we can't. We have to be invited in to do yeah. this." Um, this is you know, voluntary. Yeah. Yes. But most of the time, students seem to react positively in in that moment. Or you know, when class is dismissed, they feel like that they've had their say at least. But now, at long last, you've been able to uh, work with a research assistant, and you are. Uh, kind of uh, showing exa- some research. Well, and yeah. and showing that there is some value to this. Well, it's really interesting because there's actually been a lot of research done around small group instructional diagnoses, um, especially early on when they were when the process was first developed, and there was there was mm-hmm. a lot of research. But the really interesting thing was that it was always um, even the original write ups about the process um, sort of posited this as a way to improve teaching. Mm-hmm. But then none of the early research really focused on whether it improved teaching. Basically, what researchers were doing were were going in and talking to students and asking things about motivation and course ownership and and questions like that, things that we know um, probably do affect student learning. Mm -hmm. But nobody that we've been able to find asked the question, does this specific process improve teaching over time. Right. And that was what we really, you know, if we were going to go out and pitch these to people and encourage them to take part in the process, we wanted some evidence that it really was going to help them. So Mm -hmm. we designed a little research study. Our research question was specifically, do midterm chats affect the instructional practices of individual instructors at Illinois State University in lasting and positive ways? So, right. spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like I think we're done now. There, yeah, I just right. I just gave it all away. Right. Well, it's a very carefully phrased question, and it has to be because you know we've talked before from a general standpoint how difficult it is to find a direct correlation A to B between professional development and student learning outcomes. Yes. It, 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 it can be done, but th- there are so many dimensions and so many th- different things that affect the student learning outcomes. You know, we have to, we have to that, show that correlations. That kind of co- research yeah. far exceeds our center's ability to, to research. Right, yeah. I mean, we, yeah. we couldn't, right. um, we don't have the research team sure. here to answer that question. Right. Right. But this was something that, um, you know, basically I undertook it with a, a part-time graduate assist, mm-hmm. assistant. So, mm-hmm. um, and she's been great. Gina Campbell. Yeah. Shout out to Gina. She's yeah. been wonderful. And we'll uh, we'll also link to, um, we have some pictures that we had put up on social media. You and Gina presented this data uh, in the uh, fall of 2018 at the uh, annual pod conference. We so, did. Um, where I hear we have some fans of our podcast. We have, it turned out we had some fans of our podcast and people were very interested in our research. So we spent, um, we, we did a lot of talking at the poster fair. I so. can, I can imagine. Yeah. Break down some of what you've learned in particular. What are, what's some of the data that you, you were able to glean from this and some of the conclusions you drew from that? Yeah, I'm going to, you know, for the conference, we just focused in on, on four basic questions. I'm going to, I'll talk about those a little bit. Sure. We're still crunching the data from, um, from the other questions and we also have have as part of our research, uh, we sent for so I should say the research consisted of um, part one was a an online survey sent to 270 faculty who had participated in midterm chats. Part B was those people were asked whether they would be willing to be interviewed, and so in a way that kept um, their their um, identity separate from their responses, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had quite a few people agree to be interviewed. So we're, 
We actually aren't even quite finished conducting the interviews. Sure. So um, we're also starting to code some of that um, qualitative data. So the first question we asked was whether or not uh, faculty had found this experience to be valuable to their teaching. And 88% of them said yes. Mm. So mm-hmm. yay, Ra. That's yeah. pretty, that's, uh, yeah. that's a big number. Then we asked how valuable. <laughs> right. Um, and... Seventy percent of them said that it had been at least moderately valuable. Right. Looking at that pie chart, it is spread across several you know, different levels of valuable, but <laughs> which actually makes sense to me because midterm chats are not about wholesale change of your course. The instructors I work with, at least, usually find one or two little things that they can tweak, as uh, as we were saying, that they and their students can can work on. Uh, first semester. So it's not about, you know, we don't want people to reinvent their course every time they do a midterm no. chat. It is a uh, for a little mid-course correction and a chance to reflect at the end of the semester when you compare what you talked about in the midterm chat with the end results you get with those end-of-term surveys and stuff like that. So that makes a lot of sense to me, actually. And, and I think so, too. And then uh, the third question that we focused in on was that we asked uh, faculty, to what extent would you say that uh, the midterm chat affected your instructional practice, and seventy percent said at least a, at least a, mi- a moderate amount. Mm-hmm. So once again, you know we have um, that's that's a pretty good size number for um, even moderate. I mean, yeah. even yeah. you know we we don't we didn't intend for it to affect their instruction on a wholesale level. Right. We were really aiming for those small changes. So it. If they changed their teaching a moderate amount, yay rock, because yeah. that probably that yeah. probably meets our goal. Mm-hmm. It does uh, sort of lead us to ask, um, in what ways has your teaching changed as right. a result of, of the midterm chat? We identified um, a number of ways. The sort of highest number of changes came in terms of modifying their communication strategies mm-hmm. with students, mm-hmm. modifying in-class teaching techniques modifying their methods of delivering material or content modifying the the actual material that was that was pretty small you know like 5% and that's not really what we were after we weren't we weren't looking for people right. to change their content that's not our purview you know faculty are experts on their content mm-hmm. so we really wanted to look at teaching yeah i've never had i've never done a midterm chat for someone and have them come back to me and say oh i'm teaching the wrong subject <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't no, that's work that not way. really that's not really yeah. the point. We're really looking for people to change things like communication strategies yeah. or um, in class teaching techniques, the, things like that. I will say the one exception is I can think of one or two times where a faculty member we've gone through the midterm chat process and students were saying we've done all this stuff already. Oh. And so it turns out it it shed uh, a, a need to have a discussion on a programmatic level uh, about how much repeat content are you giving in courses. Where are we, where like we going to cover this yeah. content? Or, and are, are we, you yeah. know, and at the opposite end, I think sometimes you hear, you know, we, they think we know stuff we don't know. Yeah. And, and yeah. so that that's sort of prompts the same conversation. Right. But it, that's not really, we don't direct those at all. No. And we talk about prior knowledge and assessing right. students' prior knowledge and point them to other podcast episodes <laughs> in the series uh, and, and let them move on from there. So what else? Uh, there was, there, it looks like there are a couple other things on that. There, a, a very tiny, tiny percentage said no, they hadn't made any changes, but that was that was just really, really small. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, we were we're we're pretty happy. I mean, we we have some we do have some qualitative data. We we've, we've pulled a few sort of quotes from faculty from mm-hmm. the from the interviews. I, so one of them is, um, for example, I feel like my teaching is getting better. Having had that experience was a useful part that probably factored into the way my teaching has been evolving. So, you know, that's that's pretty insightful. You know, your teaching is going to evolve over time, yes. whether whether you do something like this or not. Um, but saying, OK, so this was one useful piece that has helped me, mm-hmm. helped my teaching evolve, perhaps a little more rapidly than it would have without this. Sure. So sure. it's it's kind of a and another thing that I noticed and this is okay I'm moving from not anecdotal but I'm I'm going to generalize based on the quantitative data and okay. and I think that um most of the people that I have interviewed 
at the time of the midterm chat were fairly early in their teaching careers at Illinois State. Oh, okay. So we have people of at all levels of experience. We sometimes mm-hmm. do these with people who've been teaching for decades. decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I can think of a couple. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at least most of the people who said yes, they, they would be interviewed. Um, when I ask, you know, when did you do this? It's like, oh, wow, it was... It was a while ago. It was my first year at Illinois State, or it was my mm-hmm. second year at Illinois State. So it seems to have, um, it seems to be particularly helpful, I think, either early in your career or perhaps early in your teaching of a particular course. Right. So I think another reason that people come to us is, well, I've, I was assigned a new course, and I just want to find out how how it's going. Or maybe mm-hmm. I'm teaching a course that's a little bit outside my comfort area, and I need to know... I need to know how it's going. So right. there can be there can be a number of reasons, but um, a lot of times people are worrying about their evaluations, their student evaluations. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I just mm-hmm. wanted to hear what the students were thinking. So or or more broadly, sometimes they just sense that something doesn't feel right. Yeah, it's just yeah. not working so far, but they're not sure what it is. So they come yes. to us to to try to investigate yeah. that. Which is why when we you know we didn't say this up front, but we have a pre chat conversation with a faculty member before we we go into the class to do the right. chat, and oftentimes that's where um, points of of data to look for at least when we're actually. Con- I think I think chat. people often come um, with a. A sort of a general sense that things aren't going as well as they would like, but also some specific hypotheses about what might be causing that. Sure. And so usually in those pre-chat meetings, they'll say, well, you know, I think it might be this or I think mm-hmm. it might be that. And um, it's it's very interesting. And I haven't done any specific research on this, but an- right. OK, so anecdotally, this isn't part of the research. Yeah. Um, a surprising amount of the time the faculty are dead on. Their hypotheses oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. are yeah. exactly what we hear from the students. So yeah. that's, you know, and I always um, praise that in my report, you know, right. as, uh, hey, wow, look, your instincts were, were dead on. Right. So this is great. Now you know your instincts were right and you can kind of move ahead and, and do the next best thing. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say I have had a few, and we've I think we talked about this in that previous episode, I have a few uh, regulars mm-hmm. that I do midterm chats for, mm-hmm. and they have been trying to build a longitudinal view by taking each of these snapshots and then kind of putting them together. That's a little beyond um, the purpose of a, of a given chat. Right. You know, as but but it can, you can go back and kind of at least use it, use it as a tool of reflection on how things have changed. We always have to keep in mind that students change, too. Not don't not just not do we <laughs> just time. not only do we evolve, but our students are changing students over time. Evolve. Students now are different than they were three years ago. And, and so that's another reason to kind of, you know, if you think that there's mm, we're not connecting for some reason, then that's another reason to, to do one of these. Yeah, that's true. And of course, as we always say. Any sort of midterm feedback is valuable. So even if Absolutely. you can't, even if you can't come to CTLT and and work with us, give your students that that midterm survey and take to heart what they have to say. Right. Talk to them about the results, and you know you'll it, it will be a good experience for everyone. So, if folks are interested in doing a midterm chat yet this semester. Uh, there's still time. There's still time. Spring of 2019. Um, we are, we usually say like around the first full week of February, we'd like to get these handled. We will accept them a little after that. But we have a limited number of folks who do this here at CTLT, and it is kind of first come, first serve. We'll do two sections for you. So it could be two sections of the same course or a section from different course numbers. Um, and, um, obviously there's some scheduling things and whatnot. Uh, you can request a particular person to do it, but, um, odds are just go in, fill out the form, go to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. Um, look for the consultations link and you'll see midterm chats right there. Just fill out the request form and uh, I, I can guarantee you whoever you get will do a good job for you. You know, we, uh, we've we worked pr- pretty hard. We worked especially early on, but also as we've brought new people on board doing chats to, to make sure that this experience 
transcends the facilitator. Yeah. That we all we all sort of, you know, we all do it the same way. We're all committed to Oh yeah, we kinda the, we kinda did process. We did midterm chat boot camp and then we had the we, we had to we had to shadow other people who've done it before. Yes. You know? Yeah. If yeah. you're if you if you come new on staff at CTLT, you can't do midterm chats until you've yes, been through boot camp and then um shadowed somebody else doing some chats and then done a chat with somebody else shadowing you. So Yeah. I, I've yeah. got more I got more training to do midterm chats than I did to do teaching originally. <laughs> Because they just they just said, "Oh, welcome aboard. Your classroom's over there." Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? My first ever teaching experience. Here are your books. Right. <laughs> I was like, "What? Wait, wait." You're not, you're not allergic to chalk, are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Claire, thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. Find out much more about midterm chats and about our pokey little podcast. Go to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. Click on the podcast link in the upper right of the page and find this week's episode, and also how to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. For Dr. Claire LaMonica, for all my colleagues here at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, until we talk again, happy teaching.